Good morning. Um, as you know, anytime I see good examples of innovation, I try to bring that to you. Well, I'm here today at the Coral Restoration Foundation in Key Largo, Florida. Um, the world's reefs are in trouble. Um, we've been losing reefs at an alarming rate in the last 10-15 years as a function of increased ocean temperatures and ocean acidification. Uh, the folks here at Coral Restoration Foundation are trying to do something about that by essentially aquaculturing corals in the open ocean on a coral tree of their own design. They have massive coral farms. Um, and once they raise, and, uh, raise the coral to the appropriate size, they transplant them on reefs that are in trouble. Um, so we're going to go inside here and uh, get a chance to meet um, some of the folks involved in that program. Uh, and then I'm going to be heading out onto the reefs, uh, me and my buddies here on scuba. We're going to get out there and actually take some of the corals that need to be transplanted and get them set up on the reef. So let's go in and uh, see what this is all about. So the Coral Restoration Foundation is a nonprofit organization that works towards one, restoring our coral reefs, two, educating others on the importance of our oceans and ocean conservation, uh, and then three, using science to further different monitoring techniques and research techniques in general. And what we focus on is trying to take care of our nurseries. We have seven in total. Our largest one is an acre in size and uh, can hold up, in total, hold up to 24,000 corals. Uh, and then from those nurseries, we take those corals, and after nine months, we get grapefruit or basketball-sized pieces of corals that we can outplant back out onto the reef. And those corals that are outplanted back out onto the reef are experiences that participants can join us with, volunteers can come join us with, um, and then after several years, those corals will grow into thickets of corals that will hopefully return our reefs into the plains of corals that we used to have, and that is our goal. That's awesome. So. Give us a little uh, overview here. I see we've got a bunch of tools on the table and a whole bunch of what looks like PVC tubing. Uh, what's going on here? So this is our little mock tree that we use for hands-on practice. And the things that we teach here are how to hang corals back onto the tree. We use uh, just essentially fishing line and these metal crimps to keep corals on the trees. And what kind of corals are we, do we have hanging here? What are these? We do focus on staghorn coral, but in our nursery, you're gonna find five other species as well. This is an example of staghorn coral that um, we have here for our research and hands-on purposes. And these corals are particularly in danger in the wild? Yes, they are on the endangered species list under threatened, uh, and there are currently over 20 corals that are on the endangered species list. And staghorn and elk coral were actually the very first to get on that list. So you guys cut them, you hang them, and then the corals grow uh, right there in the open ocean on the tree. Uh, once you guys get them to the right size, how do we get them on the reef? We use these cutters, which don't want to work right now, to cut down the coral. And then essentially, we put this tag onto the corals. And these genetic tags help us to keep track of the different genetic varieties that we have. And once we put these back on the reef, we have information that can give us valuable data from these corals as well. So we have actually a little sample table over here where you guys, where you train people on how to adhere them to the reef. Yes. So this is this is a mock reef, right? This is what we have out in the ocean? Yes, this is what we call our little reef scape. And we use this for hands-on practice. Um, and it's very, very oversimplified, but we use sand here to imitate algae growth that might be on the reef. And then we have our examples of corals here that we then uh, use epoxy, marine epoxy, to adhere to the reef. All right, so short version, we're going to go out on the reef, we're going to take these hammers, we're going to use these hammers to clear away algae and things that, are, that would prevent these from adhering, and then we use a two-part epoxy to basically glue down, for all intents and purposes, these corals uh, to, the, to the reef system, and then they're going to grow from there, yeah? Exactly. It's really, really simple. All right, guys, so we just got done with uh, sitting through the, the uh, educational session at Coral Restoration. Let's start with the scientist, Mr. Brian. What did you learn today that you didn't know about corals? I learned that corals have a very uh, primitive but functional immune system, so they can develop m immunological memory, but also, much like humans, different genetic variants of the coral can keep some alive, whereas others might die during a, a massive um, kind of death or, or stress event. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, and despite that, the corals are still in trouble on the reefs anyway. Um, so part of what I understand, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong here, is that the whole point in what they're doing here at Coral Restoration Foundation is that they have several different genetic strains, and by planting them in groups out on the reef and measuring which ones die and which ones don't, they can figure out whose immune system is better suited to the environment they've got. Yes? Yes, but also genetic diversity is the key to survival of any organism. So even if you find one that can survive a particular bleaching or stress event,
event, you do want to have variation because who's to say that another one that might die during one event won't survive another and by also by having cross genetics you can strengthen them as a whole. Awesome. So let's move on to the writer of our group. This is uh, actually my wife, BJ. Uh, so BJ, you're a writer, you're not a scientist, um, but uh, you're a hell of a smart lady. Tell me what you learned about uh, corals today. Well, one thing I learned when we were practicing taking the pieces of the coral and learning how to glue them to the reef, it's like an epoxy. It's kind of like Play-Doh a little bit. and. So my inclination would have been just to take the piece of coral and set it upright like a tree, you know, because trees root into the ground. But what they were saying was it needs to have three points of contact to glue onto the reef. So you actually would lay it on its side and then take three lumps of the epoxy and fix it that way. This way it has a better chance of sticking and it's more resistant to the wind and the wave, not, not wind, but the waves and the weather. Well, the wind produces the waves. So, so what you're telling me is that I don't need to plant them upright because they don't have root systems, right? right? So they can lay down on their side. Um, does that mean they're going to grow up? Well, yeah. What happens is when it's on its side, it'll start growing vertically on the trunk, if you will, will grow shoots up vertically. That's very cool. It is very cool. All right, so the last one in the group here is our longtime scuba instructor who just spent, I don't know what, 25 years, 30 years teaching people not to touch the corals. Correct. And here we are at an event where we're going to be going out and touching corals to transplant them. Um, you know, tell me why in general you don't want to touch corals. Um, you can damage the polyps. Uh, they're actually a living animal that uh, live inside the hard shell uh, that we recognize as coral and they come out to feed and uh, a single finger touch can kill uh, several of those polyps. Uh, I also learned from today, that something that I didn't know in all my years, is that every coral has a form of nematocyte uh, similar to that of stinging jellyfish um, and that's another reason you don't want to touch them. Even though the venom really, uh, you don't feel it on your skin, um, it, it is there. But there are some that you could feel on your skin, like fire coral, you're gonna definitely feel, right? Absolutely, that will leave you a painful sting. Yeah, very cool. All right, so uh, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down. We had a good day today, learned a lot. Fantastic. So far, so good. All right, so if you get a chance, uh, and you've never been down here, Coral Restoration Foundation, anybody can come here if you want to learn. Um, I, after this video, I will put some uh, information on the screen, uh, phone numbers you can call, websites you can go to. Come down here, learn as much as you can, get involved, the reefs need your help. So good morning, we are on the dive boat now in uh, Key Largo. We actually got blown out yesterday. We had a tropical storm come through, Emily, uh, that slowed us down, but it's a nicer day today and we are headed out to the nursery. Um, what's the other site that we're gonna go to today? To Pickles Reef. All right, so we're gonna go to Pickles Reef and yep. Pickles Reef is one of your transplant sites, yeah? Yes, it is. And how many corals have you guys put on that one so far? On Pickles 5, we put over 500 corals. All right, so over 500 corals and we're gonna add what? 20 to that? All right, so it'll be 520 before the day is out. Got out of town on a boat from the southern islands. Sailing the reach for a following sea. She was making for the trades on the outside. And the downhill run. Off the wind on this petting live of Marquesas I got 80 feet of a waterline Nice to make him wait In a noisy bar in Avalon I tried to call you But on a midnight watch I realized Why twice you ran away Think about Think about
All right, so that was a great dive. Um, Roxanne, quick question just for everybody back home here. Why were we planting the corals so close together? So our ultimate goal is for the corals to actually fuse together. And by fusing together, the skeletons will become stronger and they'll be able to withstand more current and more surge and more um, wave action in general. It'll really strengthen the entire colony. And then ultimately, the colony over here will meet the colony over here and then those will fuse together so that literally we can get back to the fields of staghorn that we used to have. And that's what it was, right? We had yes. we used to have big thickets like yes. as long as the reef yes. ran. Plains of the stuff. And how much of that do we see left in the wild now? We have four to five percent coral coverage left in Florida. All right, well, listen, uh, thank you so, so much. This thank has been you. wildly educational and really <laughs> wonderful. Again, as a reminder for everybody, I'm going to put on the video here uh, a link to their website. Uh, please, please, please donate. Uh, and whether you donate your time or you donate money, either one is appreciated. We need more people down here to help get these corals on the reef. Um, and we need more funds to help keep the program going. So anything you all can do to help would be wonderful. Any little bit helps. Thank you Thank again. Thank you. Come on down to the bottom of the sea. Come on down here, there's room right next to me. I'm tired of getting even, let's get on, on, baby, and live life at the bottom of the sea.